Well, I've had enough of a break time. i got to get to this. Sure. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Calling them in. Um, it's going to take length and weight, first of all. So, 420 and 370. I'll measure from the tip of the tail to the fork of the tail. We call that from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail is the total length. Tip of the nose to the fork of the tail is called fork length. I'm going to take a full body weight, 678 grams. Okay, take a scale sample and we can determine the um, degree of repeat spawning, whether or not this is a virgin spawner or a repeat spawner from the scales. Watch your line there for a second. Okay, and then I take a uh, piece of muscle for uh, stable isotope analysis. And uh, that uh, allows me to look at the what we call the relative trophic position of shad, what they're feeding on, whether or not it's plankton or other fishes or, or what have you. for uh, taking the DNA, so I can do a genetic assessment of the population. Uh, after that, let's see here, did that, did that, did that, we'll determine the sex. My guess is this is a female, but we'll find out. It actually feels like a spent female, <laughs> like from it spawned last night by the feel of it. It feels kind of flimsy through here. Yeah, it is a female. Um, so, shad are what we call batch spawners. They don't spawn just once. They get um, continual development of eggs as they're in the river. So, if you catch a shad early in the season, a big female, she might get rid of all her eggs, but she probably has more eggs to develop through the season. So, so the potential reproductive effort is actually really quite high. So here's the eggs. You can see these right here. Uh, I'm going to take them out and weigh them. So 130 grams, and I'll take that weight and divide it by the whole body weight, and that'll give me um, something we'll call gonadosomatic index, which is a relative indicator of the reproductive effort, I guess, what you could say, for the population, or for this individual anyway. I'll, I'll keep those and take them back to the lab and have one of my students uh, assess how many eggs there are. Uh, after that, I take out the otoliths, which are in the back of the head, 
and we use uh, these little bones uh, to determine the age of the shad. It's a bit like shad brain surgery. Here's the brain here, part of it, and the other part's up here. And right, let's see if these sort of these scales on this pair of forceps. Right down in here are two little bones, which I'll pull out, hopefully. There's one there. That's one of them. And the other one's on the other side. Where did it go to? There it is. Just had it. And there they are. One, two. That goes in there. Uh, and then I take out the uh, gill arch, the first gill arch, and uh, I'll show you, show it to you. Hope I'm not running down your too much memory on your phone there, Anthony. That's fine. So, there's five gill arches, that's one, there's two, they go back. The first gill arch, this section over here, is used for gas exchange, that's why it's all red, because it's engorged with blood, so oxygen and carbon di dioxide get exchanged here, and on this side are what we call the gill rakers, and this is used to filter out food, so when the fish has its mouth open, these are flared outwards, and food comes in and gets sieved out by rakers here and on the other arches, and so I'm taking the first gill arch of every fish to compare the number and length of the gill uh, rakers to uh, get a sense of um, how good a filter feeder this particular uh, population is relative to say those that are landlocked uh, that might not rely so much on um, planting. So I'll put those in a bag. And that's how you process chad. Hmm. Uh. Do the uh, slipper forms allow video to be posted?